What's going on everybody, Eric Barassi here, and today I want to show you the verse and chorus sections for uh, Joe Satriani's 1980. I like it because it's pretty simple, um, but, uh, but very classy, very rock and roll. So the, uh, the, the next riff after our little intro, if you want uh, a lesson on that one, I've got a video on the intro, but now we're moving on to kind of the, the verse riff and uh and that stuff so it goes like this we're in we're in c sharp minor that's our key and we're gonna play this c sharp minor seven chord which is nine nothing nine nine so and then we transition into the c sharp five power chord Okay, and one of the key things is I, I've put in the basic notes and the tablature, but some of the in between the little chugga chuggas and the the little uh, the, just the, the kind of feel things. Um, there's some extra notes. You want to just kind of keep the motion flowing. Notice if I just play the notes as written, it sounds a little dry. But you throw in these extra. It really keeps that feel going. Um, then the next part is kind of a little blues thing. So you're gonna maintain this C sharp five, uh, but where you're only using two fingers, and then uh, we're gonna just kind of go back and forth from 11 to 13, 11 to 14. Okay, and then, and of course throw in vibrato, Anytime you're holding a note for longer than a split second, generally you want to do that or use the whammy bar. Uh, and so we've got uh, 12, 13, 9. Or you could play it here 7, 8, 7. Resolve to 9 on the sixth string. So you can play it like that as well. Um, we could also play the whole thing down here in fourth position, but it seemed to me to make more sense to play it in ninth position. So the verse melody is really cool because we're kind of outlining arpeggios of the chords that are being played in the background. So the chord progression is C sharp five, A five, F sharp five, C sharp five. Okay, um, ninth fret, fifth fret, second fret. Um, over this C-sharp five, we're gonna outline a C-sharp minor arpeggio. And be sure to kill those notes in between. Very staccato and syncopated. That's a nice little thing. Then the next part over the A5, you kind of do the same thing. But it's a um, it's an A major seven that is being outlined because um, when you have an A in the bass and then this arpeggio, there's your major third, your fifth, your major seventh, and your major third again. So that's pretty cool. Over the C sharp, it gives you a C sharp minor triad over A. The same exact notes give you an A major seven arpeggio. So we're gonna shift, we're gonna go 11, 999, 12, jump up to 16, and then we outline this little C sharp minor triad, or you can think of it as being the major seventh, the fifth, and the third of the A chord. Now, there's another way that you could play this. My guess is this is how he's playing it, but you could also play it like this. So we're, we're starting at 11 on the fourth string and then going up to 14 on the same string, 13 on the G string, 14 on the second string, 12 on the first string. So you can play around with that and decide which version makes more sense uh, for, for you. 
Um, then over the F sharp five, we're gonna outline in F sharp triad. With an E on top, so that makes it really an F, set, F sharp seven. So we've got 11, 11, 11, we're just gonna bar that. And then to nine, but make sure those notes don't ring together. That'll be yuck. You want to kind of roll your third finger as you're doing that. And then real strong vibrato on those last couple of notes for, uh, for the verse. Okay, after that we get into kind of this little pre-chorus interlude thing that's pretty simple. We're just going to do 18 half step bend up to 19. And the chords behind that are G sharp five, E five, and C sharp five, and they go with that melody. Uh, so that's kind of a nice sound there. And then we kind of, we go back into the main riff, and then there's this little extra. Uh, lead part that that he throws in okay so the way we're doing that you're gonna need your whammy bar for this and we just have this little and we're gonna do dips with the whammy bar so you just take these three fingers push push and quickly release you can also just kind of pop it depending on how you want to do it. And then when we go to this 12 on the third string, you're actually going to, you're going to start with the bar depressed, and then when you pick, you're going to release it. Okay, cool. Um, and then lastly, we get into the chorus, pretty simple. Um, it's going to sound like this. Oop. And again, we, we are putting rests in between. Um, I didn't put that in the tablature, but I'm now that I'm, I'm thinking about it, you're gonna kill those notes in between each hit. So the way you're doing that is you slam your palm down against the strings and then pluck. Okay, cool. Um, and then the chords for that happening in the background are just E5, A5, and B5. Um, I think it's so important to know what chords are being played in the background, even if you're playing the lead part, because number one, it gives you context for why the notes you're playing work against those chords. Um, and then number two, it just gives you more options. If you wanted to add some flair, if you know what chords are happening, you can, uh, you, you can add some extra. Okay, and then before we go into the solo, we just have this riff. And then we get into some more crazy tapping stuff. I'm gonna save that for next week, so be sure to join me next Friday for the next installment of this song, 1980 by Mr. Joe Zatriani. Hope you guys have a great day. Be sure and like and subscribe or dislike and not subscribe. You know, whatever, but I would prefer that you like and subscribe. And uh, as my great Aunt Yoshi always says, don't eat your veggies before bedtime. <laughs>